What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second video I'll be talking about today in relation to Media Day as we discuss both Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan in this video. Now, recently I just uploaded the Arturis Kana Service and Billy Donovan Media Day for the Chicago Bulls. A lot of interesting stuff there, very knowledgeable stuff as well. And now we're going to get into what Zach Levine had to say and what DeMar DeRozan had to say. And I thought they were also two very interesting and very, very different answers to a lot of the questions asked. Before we get started, please like and subscribe to The Bull Show. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Zach Levine and the DeMar DeRozan individual media day interviews. What did you think about both of them? Very, very interesting individually for both of them as well. Overall, good vibes, good positive things, and we'll just talk about all of it in this video. I do recommend, before you watch my video, please go to all the Chicago Bulls social media platforms, the one that you feel the most comfortable using, and go watch the interviews for yourself as well, because everything that I say here might not necessarily be 100% totally accurate. It's my opinion of what they were saying as well. So if you want to get your own opinion, your own perception of what people are talking about, what Zach talks about and Damar talked about, and obviously Billy, uh, Atoris, Caruso, Vooch, Goron, all of them. Please feel free to watch those press conferences and watch those interviews as well. But let's get started. We will start with Zach Levine as he came out first. Now, when it comes to basically the first question, didn't necessarily hear the question, but it was asked about his contract situation and if he has extra motivation because of that contract. And ultimately, I personally feel like Zach Levine does have extra motivation, but I don't think Zach himself might feel the same way. Basically, he came out and said he gets better every single year. There's no need to add extra motivation to himself as he already has enough motivation as it is because he's trying to get better every single year he's trying to take the next step in his career and all of that nature now obviously when you get a massive contract like Zach Levine does to say that there's no extra motivation I'm not sure if that's entirely true but I will take Zach Levine's word at face value if he says it's not true then I will be inclined to believe him and hopefully hopefully he does have that extra motivation or that needed motivation to get better and improve every single year financially Eventually, he got his respect and, and I'm happy for that. Very, very interesting about his contract and whether or not that brings more motivation for Zach Levine. When asked about the additions of this team, he said he likes the additions of this team. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. Basically saying he likes what uh, Andre Drummond can do. He likes what Goran Dragic can do. He goes more in depth about this later in a different question, talking more specifically about the needs of the team and how there's kind of been improvements about the needs for the Chicago Bulls. But all in all, he does like the addition of Goran Dragic and he does like the addition of Andre Drummond. When asked what needs to be done to take the next step for the Chicago Bulls and whether or not um, I guess we've made those improvements necessary. He basically said, we've got to come out and beat the good teams. And again, it's very, very easy to say that. And Zach Levine is basically saying, it's easy to say, we've got to come out and beat the good teams. We've got to come out and show ourselves as one of the good teams as well. We've got to break through some of the problems that we had, uh, I guess, learn our weaknesses and try to raise the level to make sure our weaknesses are not necessarily well known. Things like rib protection. He talked a lot about taking more threes um, and stuff like that. So that was very, very interesting. And yeah, look, at the end of the day, it's easier to do that. It's easier to say that we've got to beat the good teams we did not have a great time with the good teams last year but the fact that this has been a vocal point for Billy Donovan for Arturis and now for Zach Levine it's extremely positive I hope there's a point to prove for all of them saying that we can't beat the good teams and hopefully by the end of the season we will see that we can beat the good teams actions will speak louder than words in this instance but basically saying we know our weaknesses the Bulls know their weaknesses other teams know our weaknesses now it's time to see if we can beat the good teams. We've got to step up to that level if we want to beat that level. Very, very important from Zach Levine. When asked about whether or not the East was going to be competitive or not uh, this season, he pretty much had an answer that was actually a little bit different from everybody else's. He said the East is always going to be competitive. Every single year, it's competitive both East and the West. Yes, I kind of agree with this as well a lot. A lot of people saying, yes, the East is so fantastically competitive. I always feel like there are teams that are going to step up to the plate, no matter how good or bad they are, and teams are going to underperform no matter how good or bad they are so on paper the east looks a lot competitive a lot more competitive this year compared to last year especially in our department in our conference with the Cavs and the bucks and everything like that we're going to be in for a very competitive year but i do feel like teams will not necessarily live up to the performances or the standards that they have 
And we could be one of those teams. We're going to be very careful about that as well. But basically, he's saying every team is going to be competitive. We just have to be the team that ends up stepping up to the plate as, a sh as I guess, a good team should. Very, very good. I like that answer from Zach Levine. I kind of agree with that answer with Zach Levine. We'll get into an answer that I don't necessarily agree with later on uh, with in relation to DeMar DeRozan. But yeah, all things considered, I do like the fact that he is... Um, talking about how every single season is competitive this season is no different it might be more competitive but at the end of the day we got to step up to the plate moving into the key pieces uh point of view as i mentioned before talking about the key pieces he said andre Drummond basically does bring rim protection which is something that i find a little bit questionable he averages one block per game so does nikola vucevic so if you're looking at the statistics side of things doesn't necessarily add good rim protection there but Again, we know Andre Drummond has been a good defender before. Maybe on this team, with more defenders around him from the perimeter, he could be a very good room protector once again. Very, very interesting there. We didn't necessarily improve the three-point shooting, but we can take more threes, and he trusts this team to take more threes and make more threes, which, again, hopefully will be the case. We're kind of hoping on that one. And being better at the pick-and-roll defense, 100%. We need to be better. The point of attack defense and stuff like that. Lonzo Ball was really, really good at it. Caruso was really good at it. But unfortunately, one of those guys isn't playing. So everybody else has to be very good at, um, I guess, pick and roll defense and, and no, the attack of the defense as well and stuff like that. So important stuff from Zach Levine. Uh, he was also asked about what Zach Levine needs to add or what has he added to his game. Obviously, he made a nice little golf joke there. Went completely over my head the first time as I don't play golf. But at the end of the day, he kind of brought it back to basketball and says he adds and redefines or defines his game a little bit more. And um, he adds things that he feels is necessary to add without completely changing his whole game. We know this answer from Zach Levine. He basically says this answer every single year. He adds more to his game, but he doesn't change who he is. He knows how confident he is. That's always going to be an answer with Zach Levine. Expect the same answer next year as well. Zach Levine is always going to be a guy that doesn't necessarily change his game, but will add more to it and, re and, and I guess... I guess more define his game rather than just changing it completely. So that's the answer you get from Zach. When asked about Lonzo Ball, essentially he said, just be, come back when you're ready. Um, no need to rush it. Of course, Lonzo Ball wants to be here. Uh, Lonzo Ball doesn't want to be injured. He wants to be playing basketball. And hopefully when he will be back, he'll be healthy. And yeah, that's really all he said in relation to Lonzo Ball. Obviously, the, all the Bulls organization misses him. Every single person that was talking about Lonzo Ball talked about how good of a player he is so it, it was interesting he, he or talked about his relationships with some of the players more, more specifically um DeMar DeRozan basically saying that they have a great relationship they need to play off each other a little bit more which is something I agree with because at the end of the day I think both of them were really relied on isolation a lot they weren't necessarily playing off each other that much now they both played well they both had their great stats they both were one and two in terms of our best players but I do feel like they could play a little bit more off each other a little bit more next year so with a year under our belt hopefully more healthiness between Zach and Damar as well players that actually are playing with each other they will be able to play a little bit more each other off each other and making things easier for each other then asked about Ayo Dusumu last and last and basically said Ayo is uh he's gotten bigger and he asks a lot of questions which we all knew was the case and that's really all we needed to talk about in relation to Zach Levine but we've got DeMar DeRozan next ladies and gentlemen and I like the entire vibe about DeMar DeRozan in this press conference he felt so comfortable he felt himself he felt energetic and he wasn't afraid to answer back he wasn't afraid to clap back at some reporters that's had uh, not necessarily a bad question but maybe a small remark that DeMar could use and capitalize to make his point of view across which is he's been done for a while and again it's no disrespect to the reporters asking the questions or I guess DeMar answering them in a very specific way it's just the way that it is and DeMar was very open and he he didn't necessarily call them out but he basically gave a truthful answer, an answer that he truly believed in his heart. And you could clearly tell that from the way that he answered the question as well. When first asked about Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan basically said, a healthy Zach Levine equals life being easier for himself. Obviously, they are excited to play with each other. And it's going to be exciting for us, but very scary for other teams when they see both of them together healthy and with a year under our belt as well. Important, very, very important there. Healthy, exciting, and obviously makes life easier. DeMar DeRozan 
Rosen is praising Zach Levine to the moon and back, and hopefully we'll be able to see their chemistry on the court when they get to play together. They kind of asked about Patrick Williams. This is the first time I kind of really saw, like, DeMar DeRozan, like, really smile and kind of, I guess, get out of his comfort zone a little bit and just be honest. He basically asked the media if they've talked to Patrick Williams yet, and they basically said, ask Patrick Williams, see what I put him through and see his answer. Uh, and yeah, he did get a chance to work out with Patrick Williams in the offseason. It looks like he put him through a lot. And um, I'm excited to see Patrick Williams' response to this. According to my knowledge, I don't think he's spoken out just yet. Maybe that's a different day. Maybe that's later on. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, basically with a smile on his face, he pulled Patrick Williams through a lot. And it looks like he's came out stronger because of it. He kind of, they kind of talked about how to redefine uh, his, his game because of his age and stuff like that and saying that he's not expected, or the question was that he's not necessarily expected to do what he did last year again this year and stuff like that. DeMar DeRosa basically asked why that's the case. He's not 48, he's not a certain player or anything like that. Medicine helps make players, even older players, as good as they can be. He mentioned Chris Paul. He mentioned uh, LeBron James. He mentioned a couple of other guys as well. He said he's going to try not to overthink um, playing or trying to improve or anything like that. Don't overthink it. He's going to keep working hard. And he's compared himself to a driving machine. He's going to keep on working, keep working hard until the wheels fall off and he's no longer to do be able to do what he does. And um, yeah, he's not going to let age define him which again, very, very similar to last year, I believe. And this is why I think DeMar DeRozan, even last year, was my favorite press conference that we actually had. Uh, DeMar DeRozan definitely this year was my favorite one so far that we had as well because it was the honest answer. And it wasn't he wasn't afraid to kind of go at the question and say, look, I don't believe this is true. I don't believe that just because I'm a certain age, I have to redefine my game or I have to play to a lower standard or I have to have expectations on myself. He truly believed that. And I hope we can see that as well. Honest answer from DeMar DeRozan. I absolutely loved every single bit of that. And I just like when it's not necessarily media trained answers. I absolutely love that. I love when people are fully putting their own opinions to the fray, letting the world know what they really think. And that was a beautiful answer in my opinion. One of my favorite questions asked, to be fair, even though it was not meant disrespectfully, but it kind of came across that way. And obviously, the fact that he answered it in this way as well was extremely positive. I enjoyed that question and I enjoyed that answer. When asked about the improvements he can take on his game, he basically said at this point he needs to keep on adding some things that could be small. He wants, he likes to experiment with stuff. He talked about how he could potentially be shooting with the lights a little bit darker so he could get accustomed to that and stuff like that. A little bit of crazy things and everything like that. And um, yeah, just trying to add small things to his game, which his game is pretty much, his game is what it is. It's going to be a great mid-range game, very good at slashing the butt to the basket he's become a very good playmaker from his spurs days we know what his game is going to be it's not going to be revolutionary we've seen what demar DeRozan is and most of us like what demar DeRozan is as well and just adding small stuff can really help demar DeRozan be that level be that potential mvp candidate for next year as well when asked about what it feels like to bring people under his wing including patrick williams he said he absolutely loves having people under it under his wing he said it's an absolute honor and he says that he's not better than one individual person he's not i get he's willing to learn from the younger guys and from the older guys as well and he takes that as a huge responsibility and i guess at this stage of his career he is going to be one of the older guys on the team he's going to have to lead by example he's going to have to become a leader he's going to have to take people under his wing and i'm happy that he's going to be doing that and again i've said this before the fact that he had patrick williams under under his wing this season or this offseason is huge for Patrick Williams. I said that before. The fact that Patrick Williams works with Paul George as well was going to be huge as well. So I absolutely loved that. And again, I think it will reflect well on Patrick Williams and it will clearly work well with DeMar DeRozan as he's trying to get everybody better on this team. When asked about the new additions, he said he loves the new additions. He said Goran Dragic is a competitor. He's been with all he's been all stars with both of them as well. He likes Andre Drummond and what he brings to the table, things like that. 
And when asked about the competition, here's a very interesting answer. He said that he kind of, when he looks at the East and paying attention to the East, he loves the competition the East is in. And I think he said he believes the East is in its most competitive stage he's been in since his whole career. And that he doesn't necessarily look at the rankings one through eight, but he wants to verse the best to get the best out of him. I, I agree with a lot of this answer. Obviously, when you verse the best, the best will come out of you. When you play with better players, the better play, you'll become a better player as well. And obviously, the East on paper looks at its best in terms of the competition for a long time, at least until I started watching basketball, at least. The East was always competitive, but it did drop off a little bit, and now it's looking like it's picking back up again. So, those are good things overall. I guess the only part I disagree with here is that on paper, yes, everything looks good, but we know that's not going to be the case in the regular season. We are, we know, and I'll probably make a video about it down the line. There's going to be one team, two teams, some, a bunch of teams that will be disappointing in relation to the Eastern Conference. So yes, everything looks good now. Everything will be sunshine and rainbows for a lot of teams now. We just have to hope or we have to show that we're not going to be the team that actually has that drop-off or that team that doesn't perform like they should. We don't want to be that disappointing team. Maybe it will be us but it shouldn't be us and we're hoping it's not us and there will be other teams like that that look good on paper but might not necessarily perform like that on the, on the court which is very very interesting as well and I think that's all in relation to DeMar DeRozan so there is Zach Levine's interview there is DeMar DeRozan's interview both of them done and dusted we're going to talk about Vucevic Goran Djokic and Alex Caruso in the next one I think this will be the last video I do today unless there are any more interviews I am unaware of so again a longer video and I apologize for that but two interviews done and dusted and it's two of our best players as well so hopefully you enjoyed the interviews or the reaction to the interviews hopefully you um, enjoyed the video as well thank you for watching please like and subscribe if you're new have a wonderful and safe day bulls nation i'll see you in the next video about vucevic Drogic, and caruso also check out the previous video with billy donovan and our tourist kind of service have a wonderful and safe day stay safe stay healthy stay tuned for more take care